All right, KISS Army, welcome to the KISS FAQ Podcast. Thank you for giving us your time today and letting us into your head. I hope we don't do any damage. This is a KISS-related podcast by the board for the board. We hope that you enjoy. Welcome to episode 401 of the KISS FAQ Podcast. I'm your host, Julian Gill. I nearly forgot my own name there. Uh, today, Ooh. we've got Marcus Almighty, Mark. Greetings. And 69th Blizzard, Ken. Hello. And I think our other fella probably fell asleep. It's late In over. a slumber. Yeah. Oh, that's all right. It's been a good afternoon of football. Italy not qualifying for the World Cup. <laughs> and what Wales, Wales getting a nice win over the German B team. Sorry, Austria. Um, so all is good. The, the polls, though, they frustrated my beloved Scots. So so there we go. Yeah, I've been in European mode all day. Someone sent me a photo of one of our family properties from England, which is up for sale again uh, for the second time since we got rid of it after uh, my, my grandfather passed. And our family had built the house in 1869. And it was taken oh, wow. over by a construction worker who fucking trashed it. And to uh. see what they did inside just uh were in like tears not that it was in yeah. great shape it was a victorian property and it would have taken a fucking ton of money <clears throat> to bring it up to uh modern standards but still mm. um so what new kiss news well important news actually uh alan belisha's wonderful and highly anticipated new the demons of rock book um hit a little bit of a speed bump and he has done an extensive video update on his own damn facebook page um about what happened and he went into a lot of detail so i'm going to paraphrase quite liberally and basically he submitted the print file to the printer that he had used or selected for the project and they came back at him this is too awesome we are so sorry we are unable to give it the love and attention that we would like it was too big uh for their print capacity standards whatever go watch his video if you want the details so he split it into two books and mm. everyone who purchased is going to now receive two books comprising the full yeah. demons of rock they're mm. not going to receive one or the other both comprise the product um so that's actually kind of cool he had to knock up a second cover for the second volume and split it uh so uh -huh. he and Perstrid will, uh, you know, have two books to their name. So the price that hasn't changed is still the same price? Not that I'm aware of, but I already pre-ordered all the copies yeah, I needed beforehand. So you can go yeah. to, obviously, his site, which is Kiss on Tour 1970, well, Kiss on Tour 74-83.com. And, uh, mm -hmm. of course, find him on um, Facebook if you have any questions. I'm only doing this as a courtesy as I haven't arranged to put him on the show just to talk about that. I'd rather mm -hmm. if I have Alan on talk to him about something more substantive like maybe mm -hmm. a review of the full book. Alright, so I'm going to be doing a giveaway this week and I had a coupon. I had a spin the wheel with Universal Music so I was able to get a copy of the green vinyl <laughs> copy <Is> of that. <laughs> Screen <laughs> off the soundboard virginia beach which has just come out triple vinyl 180 gram i'm actually this is the first one i've received physical product i'm actually surprised i'm not going to talk about what i thought of the show everyone already know, knows all that itself but it is hefty fucking square it, i mean it's almost a box set with the three lps in there Brief. ken mm -hmm. you've got one that you've already opened because you just can't keep ah. the shrink wrap on stuff so why don't you show no, them what, the, the what it looks like <laughs> That's a true uh, collector right there. Here is one of the you know sleeves. You know, it's again, it's like the the prior version. It's real, real, real basic mm -hmm. uh, sleeve. And I don't remember this. Uh, I think in the the prior version, I don't know if they did they not include. I think they include the, these, but they do have the uh, at least a good Ooh, anti -static. static. Oh, people are starting uh, to listen sleeves. to me. Yeah, wow. the, the Maybe, mark yeah, approved. Wow. And then, then an official uh here it is you that know, does look good i like that. uh slime green uh, is what i call it here anything in the dead wax interesting uh no i did look at it uh i don't know you know where who it was mastered by we chose um, does I, it say we we chose green because peter chris was here i know it did i know that yeah <laughs> 
I know how to stick about Czechoslovakia. Um, oh, GZ Vinyl. That's who did it then. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there is some LP. Oh, that's a oh, one. see. I'm uh, not sure uh, about the master. If, it, if, it's, if it's stamped, most likely it'll be a GZ Vinyl thing. Like all the mm-hmm. information that's on there. Yeah. There's a stamped kind of thing, but then there's yeah. some little written too. Let's uh, see if I could even get that to show up. So. No. God damn it. I have to check Discogs or something like that, but, um, you know. How many pressing I, plants are there in Czechoslovakia, Mark? There's just the one that yeah, I know of. There you one, go. So plant, the CDs so, were Hencho and Mexico, and the LPs mm. are made in Czechoslovakia. So all that onshoring is really working out well. If we're going to be technical, because I know I'll get hammered for this, it's actually Czech Republic, because Czechoslovakia is split into two countries, Czech Republic and Slovakia. Oh, there you go. All right. And you're actually right, because it is made in the Czech Republic. Yeah. So, you know, I'm still living in the 80s, clearly. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not pertinent information for people to have on an everyday basis, right? So. No, it, but it's uh, oh, there'll always be someone who calls you out, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Mark. <laughs> what, uh, what other news do we have? Well, um, this is actually pretty cool, because this story hit... Um, classic rock today and it is or no actually it was three days ago that's how far behind i am and it's mm-hmm. sylvain sylvain of the new york dolls comments on kiss so let's just start off with this i'd like to get your guys's take on his mm-hmm. opinion he chimed off on obviously he's now the late um because only <clears throat> david johansson's left from that band um but his comments on kiss we got booked with KISS for a glitter rock tour, and we were the headliners. We played with KISS in bars in the early days when they were sort of a cowboy kind of band, and we also used to rehearse in the same place. They couldn't believe that our rehearsals were as crowded as our gigs, and that we were getting all this press. Of course, they jumped into that whole makeup thing, which was very different to us. Maybe they got that idea from us. The way I would describe the difference, it's like we're going to art school, messing up with makeup and sexuality, and they're basically truck drivers who decided, oh, hey, dude, I could do this as well. It's a very manly and macho, or it's very manly and macho, macho man. Um, I have a problem with it. If you dig that stuff after the age of six, is infantile. When people write books about that era, I don't think KISS are mentioned, so as far as I'm concerned, they have nothing to do with the revolution that the dolls created. So he's almost excluding KISS from the glitter movement and being part of that discussion, which I actually find well, a, it's, it's really interesting and worthy of a book. Mark? Well, I mean, they even said themselves, if I remember it correctly from a few things that I've read throughout the years, that even Gene Simmons himself said, self, himself said that when they tried to go down the Dolls' path, because they said that they were, you know, influenced by them and their success at the time, that they did look like football players in tutus. That was exactly what Gene yeah. Simmons said that they looked like, right? So obviously he has a point in that way that it, that it was the wrong sort of image, but to dis- discard them altogether from being influential in the scene, I think is sort of ludicrous because obviously they've had quite a large influence and Kiss obviously has outlasted the dolls and not that whole sort of scene much longer than, you know, than they were in there. I mean, sure, there's people still talk about the New York dolls and they still talk about that whole thing. But I, I venture to say that Kiss had a bigger impact long term. Maybe at the beginning, it did look silly, you know, that because though, like they said, those guys, New York dolls were like, what, 110 pounds each? Like these guys, they were like thin guys, you know, yeah. so the makeup and all that kind of look suited them and worked for them, right? But, you know, did, did Paul and Gene and those guys were bigger dudes, right? They were all like six foot two. You know, they had a bit of meat on them. Gene at the beginning said that he was a heavier guy who, was, who just lost weight throughout the years. So it would have looked silly to take that approach. But I don't know. It just sounds like sour grapes a lot of it to me. Yeah, and, and that's what yeah. bothers me because obviously coming from the trio of the Dolls, Aerosmith, part of a similar sort of outsider uh, mm-hmm. perspective, different than Kiss, clearly, and Kiss, you know, the New York Dolls were part of a scene. They're, they're, everything about them, you know, the connections with Warhol and the Mercer Art Center mm-hmm. and everything that went on around there, Kiss borrowed. 
KISS took what they liked and the best elements of mm-hmm. what they thought would be successful. So they, they took, you know, the Who volume. They took mm-hmm. elements from here, the magic tramps they stole from. They stole, they, they stole from Satan, um, the the fire breathing dude, you know, magic tramps, you know, I think yeah. Jeff and Kurt probably Jeff in particular probably knows that whole scene way, way better than me. Um, off, especially off the top of my head, but kiss weren't part of that scene. Kiss were outsiders. They didn't do that whole thing. Mm-hmm. They did a little bit of it because there was crossover between bands like the brats for obvious reasons and the dolls on tour, but there was a completely different ethos. Kiss rehearsed the living shit out of their material and refined it. The Dolls mm-hmm. didn't. The mm-hmm. Dolls had some good songs, but it certainly wasn't at the level of accessibility that Kiss and Aerosmith both had. Mm-hmm. And a more important factor was the New York Dolls perhaps performed one good show out of ten. Mm-hmm. And that's a yeah. direct quote from a conversation I had with their, you know, one of their managers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, so it, it, it was their sound. The dolls couldn't get, and this is another one of his quotes, the dolls couldn't project their attitude past the first five rows of a concert hall, whereas Aerosmith and Kiss could both blow the fucking rafters off, you know, reaching the back of the hall, and therein lies the big difference. So I think, Mark, yeah. you're actually bang on by saying there's a little bit of sour grapes there, but yeah. yet the New York Dolls will always be the fucking love child of the Rolling Stones squad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I agree with Mark. It's just uh, Kiss, you know, he called them infantile... Yes, maybe it be, maybe it became infantile, you know. All the the kids that like comic books, you know, loved Kiss. Um, mm-hmm. So, which is fine. Um, but yeah, they the, the dolls and Kiss are totally two different things. Really, you can't compare them at all. Um, Kiss, you know, was the silver and black and the makeup all over the face, and and they were in your face, and they were loud and, and just and uh, energetic. Um, you know, show. So I don't think the dolls had, like you said, Julian, the music to back up what they were doing so much. Uh, or, or the, uh, and the, the performance was everything because and the perf- Aer- Aerosmith and Kiss made their bones on the road playing right. to audiences and slowly graduating to larger and larger halls. They built a following. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, if, if, you know, the, you know it was, um, the dolls were so, you know, great they would have you know been huge um but they you know the music wasn't there uh and i guess like you said the live playing so yes sour grapes you know what are you gonna do you got you gotta have way more to you than just hype you know um you gotta back it up you gotta gotta back back it up but if you're you know the the dolls were taking out of almost the bowie the ziggy androgyny and and that level kiss's makeup is it not I mean, initially, you see those very early pictures from the first few shows of Kiss Heavy on the Rouge doing the New York Dolls trip, yeah. which is which is hardly surprising either, you know, with Peter, um, you know, what, trying out for the Dolls in, you know, after Billy died. So there are, you know, connections between the two bands, but I've said it before, you know, the New York Dolls had looking for a Kiss, and Gene and Paul said, well, here's Kiss. You know, mm-hmm. here's here's our answer to the doll's question, and which one is still around 50 years later, and which one is still admired. You know, the dolls still have a shitload of fans, as those first two albums, particularly the debut, um, you know, have a lot of respect. Mm-hmm. There's no doubting that there was decent music. Daniel, thank you for waking up and joining us. Whoa. We've got no idea. We've got no audio. You sound for like you. a broken computer. You sound like a mm. Casio. Can barely, can barely synthesizer. Can't, can't understand you. So yeah, he'll figure it out. 
Yeah, to take, take care of that. I, I've mentioned Aerosmith a couple of times, and, and I'm like really chuffed today. I did get tickets for the Aerosmith residency. Kiss ain't doing a residency in Vegas. I'm still going to Vegas. So if anyone else out there listening to this show who also likes that band is going to be out there for the June the 20th show, that's the one I'm attending. Uh, I'm going to fly in on the Sunday, spend the day in Vegas, probably at Kiss Monster Mini Golf, <laughs> because there I like go. that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> all right. One other thing. Guess what I bought? Oh, the, the oh that bought. was the one nice. from. Does it play on? Um, no, it uh, doesn't fucking play on. US. Did I? Did I? Did I read it? Ray player. No, it's Australian <laughs> coded, uh, and I don't know why they're selling them in the U.S. Then you need to convert so, it. Yeah, so I, I I did one thing. I my background blanking's really screwing up stuff today. I hate that cover so much because when you're talking about history, I did a little edit. So, nice. Oh, nice. Be the proper. Uh, yeah, should have been the proper. I put the proper lineup, and uh, I'm, I'm still working on it, trying to get it look good. All right, Daniel, how's your audio? No. Okay, we'll come back to you in a Try minute. Mark, switching it. Mark, get us yes. started with the topic. Okay, hang on a second here. So, I I was highly impressed by Ken's master list here of things that polarize Kiss fans. Right. So I, I'm guessing we should probably start on there right Fair and water, uh, everything <laughs> yeah exactly i let me just say mark that yeah i i was thinking about it as like kiss has got to be the the most you know their fans which you know we are part of mm -hmm. are have to be the most polarized fans of any you know band or or artist um out there you know leaning one way or the other and, and it's like no in between kind of thing yeah well that's true and i mean all the topics that you kind of mentioned in within that are are are, are things that are talked about quite extensively you know amongst kiss fans you know like the whole uh thing that you put here like uh the the, the whole thing with the uh, the statements lies or posts made by gene and paul i mean you have you have people who will support them no matter what and then you have people who will call them out on it. I mean, that that's that right there almost seems like the one true dynamic of the Kiss fans, you know? It's like there's either total support or there's well, people who are kind of like, hmm, I don't know, like like Gene especially with his comments, you know? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I know I listed some things, you know, about uh, people supporting uh, or, you know, when, when they start talking about... Uh, tours you know on the kiss faq and they start comparing you know oh you know the attendance was much better back in 77 <laughs> you know they had a yeah. lot more people there and uh, over you know like the reunion or or the current you know it you just need to look at it, you know one of julian's books it'll tell you the attendance there and it'll set you straight but some people just refuse to believe that uh a certain era was or did better or or did worse th than another um and then you know some people get all excited over you know like the merchandise and again some people like the merchandise some people don't like the merchandise um it's, it's again every every single thing that kiss touches it's there's a there's a good side and a bad side and and the fans you know, lean one way or the other. Um, you know, it, it's just totally po polarized. Or it's always something to argue about between Kiss fans. It seems. I usually don't argue about it because you know I always think, you know, it's it's a matter of opinion. Of course, <laughs> it's, it's your opinion. Yeah. You like what you like. I like what I like. But some people do not <laughs> go that way. They they they're right and you're wrong. You know, there's no two ways about it. Yeah, I only have a problem with people's opinions when they're factually wrong. Once, once, well, yeah, or if their opinion opinion is based on factually incorrect uh, stuff. Daniel, let's do a mic check on you. One, two. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yay! Welcome to the show. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm late. I, I thought daylight we were savings starting. time. By the way, uh, Daniel, this last week. So. That's what they happened. Did, they, they didn't change it yet, though. There. Oh. No, but we, but America does. Uh -huh, yeah. So it was changed time already. We do it on uh, 
We go to summertime uh, this week, and I think so. That's yeah. why. Okay, so I'm trying okay. to stop that here, hopefully. Yeah, I'm yeah. hoping. Yeah, I'm the, hoping that they do. Same talk has been going on here as well, but uh, so far no changes. So, w- what have you guys been talking about? What, what What's the question? Well, Mark brought up the the first kind of topic is you know the polarization of Kiss fans, the Kiss Army. Is it just a matter of people argue for the sake of arguing, or are there are there deeper things involved in it from your perspective? I mean, we we see the you know like the the Kiss FAQ message board is a good kind of small example of a single community. <laughs> yes. It doesn't represent the wider world. It doesn't represent my mm-hmm. views or anyone's views, but it, it's 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 his own character. And it seems that people will fight about absolutely anything <laughs> when it comes to KISS. Mm. You know, what's your take on that? Well, there, there are a lot of keyboard warriors out there. So uh, <laughs> I'm not sure how much of it is really true. Uh, sometimes it feels like people just enjoy the, the, the discussions and, and go a bit too far at times. But I think KISS might be a bit unique when it comes to um, being such a diverse band, being having done so many different styles. So if your point of entry was in the early 70s, you know, the dangerous KISS with the knives and the uh, girls without clothes in, in the pictures and so on and, and blood and all of that, mm-hmm. of course you were disappointed when they showed up in those Flamingo uh, looking uh, costumes in 79. So, so, and the same goes if, if you were a kid in 79 um, uh, and you, you started following Kiss when you heard I Was Made for Loving You. Uh, and then a few years later, they did Creatures of the Night. That's a, that's a big step mm-hmm. away from, from what you, you, you started as. And for a lot of us, I know Ken is a 70s fan. Fan, but, but the rest of us started in 85, somewhere around there. And uh, uh, then you had the history of KISS, you knew of it, but uh, and you accepted it, but your, your point of entry was, like for me it was Animalized Asylum. So I I really enjoy those, those albums. But I do understand someone who joined in the 70s might, might think that KISS had sold out and changed too much. So I think the biggest problem is that KISS had, has changed so much from, mm, yeah. you know, through the eras. I don't know if you mentioned that in, 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 in your uh, arguments, but, but I think that's the main reason. You know, a band like ACD, so what's, there's not a lot to be upset about exactly. other than that they haven't released a great album since 1980. That's the biggest problem with them. Maybe Razor's Edge in, in, in the early 90s, but other than that, I don't see a lot of greatness coming from the ACDC camp. But they do the same stuff over and over again. But I think those fans, there's a, a bit more, um, you know, a solid, uh, no, not changeable uh, base to that band. Kiss has always been, you know, following the trends a bit. So I think that's the the, the key to, to the issue. Yeah, yeah. AC, ACDC stays in, in their lane pretty much, right, throughout their career, where, where KISS is either changing a lane uh, for a purpose or or via, you know, the, the trend, changing a lane to follow the, uh, a trend. Um, so, you know, it's just like the, you know, the albums, you know, going from Destroyer and you know to rock and roll over and these other albums that they, they've come out with there's a big uh always an argument about the music probably more, more about the music than anything else yeah with well, acdc there are bon era fans and brian yeah, fans that's and there true. are that, a, there is know, a separation acdc thing. fans because it's about the young brothers or was you know, but I, I have seen, I don't know whether they're on the FAQ arguments about the bassists, you know, and, you know, mm-hmm. some of that level of things and, and drummers, you know, the same goes for other bands like Judas Priest, you know, KK Downing and um, kind of the guitarist question in, in Priest. So, you know, I think other band fans of other bands certainly have wars. I think, you know, look at Van Hagar. 
or Van yeah, Halen. There is a... That's that's a that's a bloody mess, and there is only one Van Halen, and it's those first, you know, what five albums? Yeah, that's. I listened to the all of those yesterday, and I stop right there. Those are great. Even, I don't even bother with a different kind of truth in, in that playlist. Forget it. Uh, and I never listen to Fifty One Fifty. Well, really? And from from my point of view, I really enjoy Balance from from the nineties with Van Halen. I think that's a great record. Uh, but for me, the entry point was uh, Van Hager, and really? therefore it was easier for me to accept. Right. But if you have a major change, if you if you were used to one singer and you 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 change, of course you you're gonna get upset, especially when you change the singer. What was my entry point? I think it was Diver Down. So. Oh really? Okay, yeah, that's, that's I like that one. Um, you know the uh, the other thing, especially is that the big argument is about you know Kiss using the makeup on, or you know lit, letting Eric Singer and Tommy Thayer you know use the yeah. makeup of Ace Frehley and uh, Peter Chris. Um, yeah, I mean again, I, I was one that you know I wish they didn't do it originally but i i understand why they did it and it and i just i just accepted it i'm just just like you know i you know you know once you do that i'm no longer a kiss fan there's some of those people but they it's you know drunk. they're no longer a kiss fan but they keep saying i'm no longer a kiss fan but i keep talking about kiss every day yeah that's true. It's like <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's fascinating some of the of the people on the board seems to hate kiss they seem to really hate kiss but still as ken said they're there every day, every week, uh, you know, speaking bad about the band. And uh, you just mentioned the Eric Singer uh, mm -hmm. uh, makeup thing there. Uh, initially, I was against it totally. I thought it was blasphemy. Uh, but as the years went by, I actually think they did the right thing. I, I actually think uh, that was the way to go in order for the band to be you know, successful, keep it, keeping the, the myth of the four phases. And I wouldn't like two more Vina Vincent uh, mm -hmm. type of makeup. Uh, those four original stuff, even though they are so heavily connected to Ace and Peter, uh, to me now, I think it was the right call. Yeah. I don't think you, Mark, and I ha ha are allowed to have an opinion on the makeup because we weren't fans and you know, we weren't we didn't become fans in the original no, layer so we don't have do we have that emotional attachment or a right to judge it from an emotional perspective other than a logical one mark well uh, i mean i think that's sort of a foolish way to look at it i mean of course we we, we no i mean because we, we we like we like the band for what they are right i mean we like for me personally, I like all eras of the band. I have no problem with the original lineup. I have no problem with the Eric Carr time with the band, with Vinny or with Bruce. And I don't mind the, the Tommy Thayer, Eric Singer lineup as well. Because when I saw them when they first started, like a lot, the, the, more, the most concerts I've seen of Kiss were probably with Tommy in the band. Because I saw them when they did the reunion tour. I saw a couple concerts then. And then I saw... Uh, uh, Psycho Circus show one show from them with them so that was the original lineup right and then after that it was all with Tommy and Eric you know I never saw them on the world domination tour when it was Tommy with Peter Chris so I missed out on that but you know to, to me I was just happy that the band was continuing you know that they didn't find a reason to stop you know if they, if they weren't going to continue without doing the makeup then having Tommy come in and do it and making them be, feel excited enough to continue playing, I thought was the right move. And to be quite honest, I know I'm going to get egged for saying this, but I really enjoyed the concerts with Tommy because he played better live. I mean, I saw Ace mm. with them on stage, and mm. he was sloppy as shit when I saw him. You know, <laughs> and and I mean, when he was when they played in Hamilton on the uh, Lost Cities tour, I mean, the guy was so out of it he fell on stage, like he literally fell. Mm backwards and there's a great shot of gene looking at, at ace's roadie and ace's roadie's looking back at him like l looking to give him the cue like should i go and pick him up and gene literally looks at him and just waved him off and said to leave him there they were so annoyed with him 
and he stayed on the ground until the until the lights went black and then somebody came out and ran out and picked him back up again right but you know look it i i'm a i'm paying x amount of dollars to go see kiss okay and they deliver a great show but do i want to see a great show and have a guitar player who plays the set okay you know sloppily and then falls and then they leave him on the ground or do i want to see a show where the guy comes on stage plays everything note for note really well and you know it's a fantastic show the pacing is good and everything's good. i mean come on ask yourself that. i mean you're the one who's paying the money if you have no problem with that then great but for me personally i enjoy the shows that i saw with tommy and eric singer eric singer is a phenomenal drummer i'll say that from the from the revenge era all the way up to now he has never been a disappointment when i saw him live you know so that that's my perspective and and whether or not i didn't see them in 76 or 77 meaning that so that means i can't comment on the you know the makeup and all that stuff i think that's bogus no i'm just saying yeah, that you don't have um, that same emotional attachment to something from when you were six right. years old yeah. and has been well, a part of your life for all those years that, that's well, well, that's the only thing not that you can't have an opinion well, but but on, in one way, I kind of had that connection through my sister because my sister was a fan back in the early days from like 76 onwards. And I, and I remember being very young and seeing my sister being extremely excited when Destroyer came out or Rock and Roll Over came out. And so whether and even though at that point I didn't know anything about the band, I mean, in a way, I was how did I say that? I'm living through, vicariously through her with her, yeah, you know, love, love of the of love of the band then. So. And I know that when all that stuff started happening with Kiss, I know what, she got really upset about it too. Like, oh, Peter left and this and that because she liked Peter, you know? So, you know, I wasn't as invested as she was at that point, but you know, I, I was aware of things. So I have a maybe 50% right then to say something. Just real quick, uh, I mean, it's pretty interesting to hear your thoughts on the replacements, uh, the replacement player, players. Uh, Personally, I always thought that most of the replacements, uh, they added something new to the band, something <clears throat> new to the sound. Yeah. Often uh, a bit, they, they made the Kiss sound a bit more modern, uh, all the way back to Vita Vincent uh, mm -hmm. and all the way up to Eric Singer. The only one I didn't think brought that much was pretty, uh, was, was uh, that, um, that person was Tommy Thayer. But that was not his fault. In the beginning, he 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 pretty much was hired to be, you know, the Ace Frehley clone. Mm. So uh, for a few years, I kind of lost interest in the band because I thought it was bogus having that guy playing Ace Frehley. It was so you know blatant, obvious. Uh, while Eric Singer had some history with the band and he didn't mimic Peter Chris's playing style, at least not to the same extent as Tommy Thayer did. So I really felt it was important for Kiss to release albums with Tommy Thayer as the guitarist. So when Sonic Boom came uh, came out, uh, my, my interest started to grow again because Tommy Thayer became kind of legit in the band. And uh, even though he still, you know, mimicked a whole lot of Ace Frehley's uh, tricks when he did his solos and stuff. I still thought uh, uh, it was important for Tommy Thayer to 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 be a, a you know a real part of the band. So uh, even though I, I'm not particularly fond of Monster, I think I think Sonic Boom is pretty good. Uh, I thought I think those two albums were were, were important in order for Tommy Thayer to you know get his a, a real place in, in Kiss. Uh, so. Uh, after Sonic Boom, um, I kind of accepted Tommy Thayer in the band, and, and uh, I've been listening to them ever since. Ken, any yeah. final thoughts on all that? Final, yeah, one final thought would be, you know, <clears throat> you talked about Tommy Thayer, um, uh, and he did play a lot on, uh, actually, you know, Psycho Circus, too, right? Uh, Hot in the Shade. As well. though, yeah. though you didn't know that. Yeah, even you know, in the shade. So he he was there. He has experience. He has his own guitar solos, but yeah, um, on stage when they're playing the old music, you know, uh, the '70s, uh, you know, he's doing his best to keep those solos intact. 
Um, because if he yeah. plays as something else, they're going to say people are going to fans are going to go, why can't he play? Then they're going to say, why can't he play like Ace? So you, you win, you know, you play like Ace, you win. You, you don't play like Ace, yeah. you lose. You know, so yeah. I'm glad that he sticks to the guns because the solos are very important in in the music of Kiss, uh, even you know throughout all eras. Uh, it's you have to have that, uh, you know, be able to recognize. Uh, the solo, at least you know, to a bit. I know Bruce would Bruce. have a flavor, but he he throw his own little touch mm-hmm. on there. But still, so, you know, the the roots of the solo were you know were still there when he played like Ace's solo. Vinnie Vincent was a hit and miss. I remember some of the solos. That were, was a hard one. Yeah, almost Vinnie, really. unrecognizable, and mm-hmm. and that was a hard pill to swallow. Even though some of them, he took to another level i remember watching uh, you know that concert from from south america in 83 um rio and uh, some of the solos i didn't care for but but there's a one or two that were, were like oh wow this is a whole new ball game like the solo for calling dr love i remember i think thought was wow this really updates uh the the song but overall vina vincent pushed the envelopes a bit too much and uh, at times he he was way off I think Bruce on the other hand was great at updating the solos and uh, but that's maybe just because I grew up with that era I don't know but 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 it's my opinion that he 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 you know he he tweaked the solos a bit but not too much right so he didn't went yeah. overboard like Vinny you were did still familiar yeah. Yeah. yeah well I mean one thing that- Sorry, go on. No, continue. I was going to say that in in, in supporting uh, what he was saying, uh, what Daniel's saying, uh, recently we've gotten at least a, a couple of us here to talk online, uh, received some uh, really nice soundboard or, or at least live recordings from a, a certain person on the board here. And uh, the 84 show, that that we that we got there from the Lick It Up tour, I thought that was a really fascinating listen because that's a great example of Vinnie Vincent, you know, being on for some stuff and then other songs when he plays it, it just absolutely like what is he playing like with the guitar solos, yeah. right? But but the thing that you but you but you made a great point though, Daniel, is that because he wasn't he wasn't so crippled by the makeup when it came off for lick it up he could he could really show his own style at this point and that's where he really started showing his more flash i thought because like when he did his individual guitar solo and stuff like that because he didn't have to stick with any kind of a makeup gimmick you know he could really show who vinnie vincent was to him that's where tommy thayer had the disadvantage because when they got him in he had to wear ace's outfit and makeup and he had to perform like him so he couldn't throw in any Tommy Thayerisms in it because they didn't want that, right? Yeah, so Mark's referring to three shows that showed up on Dime recently. Uh, Madison, Wisconsin, mm-hmm. uh, March 85, and some of these have been available previously, but these are supposedly, you know, um, upgrades, you know, closer to the source, um, including one new show, I think it was, um, January 86 for Indianapolis and mm-hmm. the the really good one is uh, Tower Theater from Philly, yeah. um, March 84, so that's the, the Lick It Up one, and I can't give you any other information on that other than it's on Dime, and no doubt if uh, it's a new-ish show, it'll no doubt be out on bootleg. Uh, speaking of which, mm-hmm. the Destroyer box set, anyone see that and thoughts on that? The new Destroyer bootleg yeah. box uh, comes with picture discs which uh um and it's got the springfield which is the last show of the destroyer tour proper um show on it apparently a unreleased audience what what does that mean because that show's been out for years and it, it actually sounds more like a dog barfing than a, a kiss concert so <laughs> yeah. um is it a new source that's the only thing that, that really someone? interests me and i think uh, it's got anaheim as or yeah and I'm, I don't have it in front of me, but picture this. I don't give a fuck about because well, they don't sound made, good. Well, they're not made for playing because they're not pressed with as much pressure you because you put the insert in between two pre-pressed pieces exactly. of um, clear vinyl and then you just seal yeah. it. Basically, you're not doing a 50 ton or whatever it is, you know, full mechanical heat press. Mm-hmm. So 
There, there, there are so many possibilities for Kiss when it comes to releasing off the soundboard, uh, and the last one was a real disappointment. I think, yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, it was a you know a lazy pick, as I remember Ken said in the previous episode. Uh, so that's why it was great get, get, getting, yeah, get, yeah. Uh, I think most fans were a bit disappointed by that one, and hopefully. They do the right. They make the right right decision next time because those mm-hmm. three shows that you mentioned, Yugon, that's the way to go. You know, uh, we haven't got anything from Eric Carr in years. I don't know why. It's almost it almost feels like they disrespect him somewhat. I'd like to see a show with Eric and Vinny or Eric and Bruce. Uh, I mean, it's time, guys. You, you know, they have to release something. We're starving for it. Yes. So, so and, and and then something from from their venture, and of course the originals as well. So there there must be shows <clears throat> a whole lot better than this uh, one they picked last. Last year. Yeah, and j- just so that anybody was interested in what Julian was talking about, this thing that I just held up, which is this box set here that they're advertising. Uh, it has four picture. It says four picture discs. Individual sleeves, two concerts, the Roosevelt 1976 soundboard and the Springfield 1976 oh, yeah, unreleased nice. audience recording. Now, that's where I get fearful because those ones always sound like a cement grinder and not really a concert. It's like <clears throat> horrendous sounding, those kind of audience recordings. It also has photos of the 76 U.S. Destroyer Tours, a 76-page book, five buttons, one press kit as a replica booklet, one huge poster, four stickers, three guitar picks, and one tour flyer. So the thing with these box sets I always find personally is if you're going to get them, get them for what's in there rather than what the audio is because half the time the audio is just completely like shit. So uh, uh, unless unless it's a, a known soundboard that's actually half decent, I would have no interest in this if if not just for maybe some of the other things in there, like maybe the press kit or some of the other things. But these are pretty pricey too, don't forget. Yeah, how yeah. much are they? See, how much yeah. are they? Well, I only well, saw the Australian sure. pricing, which was 499 Aussie dollars, which was 375 US. Which yeah, so. Obviously, they will have had to pay to get uh, it shipped down there. Um, Don't get kiss any money. ideas about pricing on box sets, man. Yeah, yeah I, but Mark, I, I say you, sa- save your money for something better. Mm. Because a real, no, real no release. Doubt. And as I, for off, always, the, off the soundboard, I mean, just keep releasing them. If they're hit, yeah. they're hit with us. If they're yeah, missed with us, at least they're out there as well. You know, so yeah. from that perspective, KISS fans can't lose because they've at least released another one. You know, so keep yeah. going, you know, and, and hopefully True. we'll get to one that we're all, you know, salivating and drooling about while <clears> discussing <throat> on a show. And, yeah. you know, then there might be another one that's a meh. But as long as they, these exist to bitch about or to discuss, it's a victory for KISS fans. Uh, Daniel, are you going to say something? Yeah, but I, I, I want to direct a question to, to, to Mark because I, I've always been thinking from when I started out as a, as a fan, how is it possible to press these uh, bootleg albums in such a great quality? Who presses these things? I mean... Over here in Europe, it's hard enough to to uh, do a lot of bootleg Kiss T-shirts, but that's not that easy to get, uh, you know, uh, someone to press it for you because they just see the Kiss logo and that, then there's a no, 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 we can't do that that T-shirt. Well, you, you know what though? It's funny that you say that because I know a guy, and I'm not going to name names because I don't want to get anybody in shit, but I know a guy actually in Sweden who owns a pressing plant. Oh, Daniel. And, uh-huh. and, and and he and he actually. <laughs> And he actually has been saying that he, he gets approached for stuff like that all the time. And sometimes it's hard to say no because the, the, the money that they're offered to uh, press these things uh, is okay. pretty pretty good to do, Six. right? And, and if you're a new pressing plant starting out who needs the business, then maybe pressing a couple of these. And don't forget, too, Frank Zappa used to say all the time that all these bootlegs that he had coming in about from his shows mm-hmm. were all coming in from Europe because their copyright laws are much different over yeah. there than they are in North America. You couldn't get away with press, pressing that here in North America. You get, you, they, they'd find you, knock your door down and arrest you, right? But over there, it seems like they're much more lenient on it. And you know, places like Russia do it a lot as well, yeah, you know? Russia. But you know, the, the thing is, in, like I said, this guy, is a, he has a really nice pressing place. 
you know, it, and it's relatively new. So it, they, they are the prime targets for these kind of bootlegger guys, right? And I mean, there's a comment here too that says, nice stuff, at least the bootleggers know what to do. Yeah, they know what to do as far as merch, but they don't know what to do with audio. That's the problem, sound. you know? Yeah. And, and when I'm buying something, I, I want it to sound good. I could give a shit about stickers and pics and all that stuff. I want to listen to the audio. And if there's going to be only, if there's two concerts and one of them sounds shit, sorry, I'm not buying it. You know? Yeah, and from from my perspective, the again, for everyone who bitches about what a record label does versus what a bootlegger does, a record label has to pay for every single line item that comprises that box, whether it's the music, whether it's obtaining the music, having the music processed, having um, payments to rights holders made, whether they're, it's per performance, whether it's uh, publishing, et cetera, et cetera. There are all these facts. Oh, yeah, photographers, you want that photo book? You want to license all those fucking photos? Photos, you're going to have to pay for every single one unless you've got a blanket deal with a photographer. Um, you know, every single thing that goes into an official box set has to be paid for, and that comes off the profit margin. Mm -hmm. A bootlegger does have some costs, no doubt, but when they're basically downloading an audio from, um, you know, Dime or elsewhere and doing it themselves to be mastered they don't have the cost that a, a label has to do legitimate product so they've got an absolutely gigantic profit margin and that's why they can offer filthy amounts of money to a pressing plant in europe to mm -hmm. get their product or a printing plant to it because they probably have to pay a bit more to stay off the fucking radar regardless of some of the lax laws <laughs> yeah. and enforcement mm -hmm. that goes on elsewhere and there's probably yeah. a whole lot of other factors that i haven't mentioned that come into play both on the official and unofficial you know when that um not for the innocent 2 cd came out great liner notes cut and pasted from my shit <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, always stealing your stuff which is fine because I, I don't complain about cut and paste when you look back at the Kiss album Focus that was cut and paste of a lot of quotes from various sources all attributed you know and, and falling within that realm so I'm not one to throw stones at that but that is how they do it they, they'll take a photo from anywhere from an eBay auction I've seen some bootlegs and you can still see that what was it image shack thing that's been you know photoshopped out so you know it, it, it's good if people enjoy them fine but there are some more stuff coming i don't know if you've talked a lot about andrew's new project i think that's a bit exciting <clears throat> the yeah. uh the uh tokyo rock and roll party yeah coming out on april the 2nd um okay or actually, is it April first? Sorry, sorry, Andrew. I've got, I've got. You just sent me a message. April the first. It might be a April Fool's thing. <laughs> no, so, <laughs> so he's done an HD upscale of that show, fixed a couple more things, and it looks absolutely incredible. It's going to be a fantastic viewing experience. I hope he does a live stream uh, of it as well, so I can yeah. uh, bully him into letting me be on that, and we waffle on about the show uh, <clears throat> while everyone tries to watch it because it, it's. Fun. I mean, number one, it's yeah. a short show, but it's really entertaining. Daniel, back to you on that. Yeah, but I think it's great that fans like Andrew, with with a lot of talent, put this amount of time into, you know, doing stuff that that's up for grabs for every Kiss fan. It's up, for, you know, he doesn't make any money out of this. It's just passion all the way. Um, and this is, sounds like something really exciting and I hope we can do something with it on the show and, and I enjoyed the last time I think you did the same thing in the last time around you and him you know sat down and, and talked through uh, one of his release releases it was real fun to watch uh, but uh, it was quite a bummer I was waiting for the hot in the shades thing oh, yeah. you know he, he has been talking about doing something from the hot in the shade tour and that's one of my absolute favorite tours as well and it's not widely covered you know there's not a whole lot of stuff out on that one you have the two detroit concerts and it'll be interesting to see what he does with that but uh i think he will do something with that uh, down the line so so i'm looking yeah. forward to that as well but but this is a uh, this is great news and available for everyone and you do, you don't have to pay a cent you know now 
was is this is the big selling point because I'm, I'm still kind of new to the whole thing but is the big selling point that it's new uh like newly found or newly remastered audio with this footage or is no. it that the footage is the no big thing? the 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 audio on it is still the flawed rock and roll over rock and roll party in tokyo audio uh <laughs> which has a little bit of tape oxidization in parts i think it's most noticeable in bath the reels you know from which that were sourced probably um, didn't make it out into circulation. So it's the best that's currently available to collectors, um, Broly. So he's used the very best version. And, you know, there's there was another fan on the FAQ who had a, a, a cleaned up copy as well that I think he'd done, done some tinkering with to try and improve it as much as possible. But tape, tape oxidization to that level, you, you, you can't put a Band-Aid on... Uh, on a decapitation, mm. you know. But that's uh, yeah. also known as the. Uh, is that also known as the Lost Alive Two? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which I have a Lost Alive Two, yeah, on my uh, computer. Um, uh, I'm wondering the quality. It's pretty good. I mean, it's it's it's, ve it's very good quality. It pretty has, good quality. It has been uh, engineered right. and mixed by Eddie Kramer. You know, yeah, so yeah. it was essentially ready to go. Um, but the copies that made it out into you know into our hands as collectors and fans just you know don't do the full commercial justice so again if that's one that they have in their vaults which presumably they do if eddie kramer had those it multiple needs, reels up for auction years ago uh, that got pulled um, they need to release that either as a, off the soundboard or uh, as a part of an alive two uh, box set you know yeah. Yeah, because the they, they would have recorded all the show or multiple shows <clears throat> in Tokyo uh, in order to yeah. make that album. Because we've seen the notes again for um, mm. what Eddie include was all of the on. shows. That would make a great if they don't want to do single LP off the soundboards and a double LP with both versions of that, or mm -hmm. you know, on two LPs, so both shows from the day or however it worked out yeah. would be really fun to listen to. And then we're getting into the sort of era and realm that I think a lot of fans would be particularly interested on. And again, just one last thing on those reels is there were a couple of different mixes. So hmm. LP one yeah. is mix one, LP two is mix two. You know, keep it in the in the brown paper bag see, packaging. Yeah, see this is all great idea, which is exactly why it won't happen. Because all the great <laughs> ideas they don't do, right? You know, all the, it's all the terrible ideas that they they go through with. But, yeah, but we're we're know. like the we're like the bootleggers. We don't understand what the line items are that are involved in each That's release true. and how yeah. they come. We we have no no insight or clue into the decision making process that results in a uh, a swamp green or Nickelodeon green slime um, <laughs> up Virginia Beach off the soundboard hitting our Amazon delivery. We we've got no yeah, but, clue. But you guys, um, we've got two off the soundboard from the you know the later years do you think the next release will be from the 70s 80s what, what, are, your, what are your thoughts on that i'm praying for a for an 80s one i really <laughs> am praying for an eric carr one because i think there's been enough noise made about it every single thread i've seen that's about this everybody's oh, yeah. been saying eric carr needs to be represented eric carr needs to be represented and surely I'm not saying that these guys, you know, come onto these message boards. Like, I don't think that Paul Stanley frequents a message board like I this. Hope, I fucking but, hope not. But the thing is, <laughs> it, it's, it's, this kind of information must trickle back to them somehow. You know, I yeah, guarantee you I'm there's sure. somebody that they know that goes on here or something, and they sure. hear about it somehow. So this is not news to them, that people are bitching that there should be an Eric Carr one. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed that the next one that they're going to announce has Eric Carr involved in it. I mean, they listened to me finally about the anti-static sleeve, so maybe they'll listen to us about, you know, doing an Eric Carr thing. So c come on, guys, like, please. I, I think Daniel would agree that that's probably a good one to go to next. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. Um, you know, I don't know what they're going to do. I mean, but if they do another one with the, with the current lineup mm -hmm. as a third in a row, mm -hmm. you're going to hear... This place is going to blow up, you know. Oh, the oh FAQ is going to blow up. Um, even my mind will blow up. It's like because I I would not understand. I have no idea why they would do that. Um, uh, they have to go to some oh, other era. Maybe what? they'll do an off the soundboard from Dubai. 
Uh, right. You're uh, finally getting Mark, something. I yeah. mean, you're just teasing the tiger there. I mean, <laughs> way, way, way to try and trigger cat. <laughs> Off the soundboard, it's, it's been quiet. Off the soundboard, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, but but if they would release another another show from the current lineup, there's something wrong, you know. Are there? Don't they have the you know the uh, authority? Right. The, yeah, the authority, the rights to release any other stuff. Because if if the next one is from from the current lineup, there's something fishy going on. Yeah, so my my bar is ever changing in terms of where I am as a Kiss fan. I think probably like a lot of Kiss fans, I think we're bipolar in some ways. That we, what we love one day, we hate the next, oh, right. or, or maybe even the minute. Um, <laughs> but before I go there, uh, blowing up the Kiss FAQ, that comment maybe that's not such a bad thing, considering. <laughs> um, getting back to off the soundboard, the next one. I, mm -hmm. I think the bar has to be that if it's not better than what's already out there, then don't fucking bother, please. And this uh, that was my complaint with Virginia Beach, is that Instant Live already did better justice to hiding those warts. It was seeing the Emperor naked for me in some ways, because I listened to all those shows, and to suddenly hear those flaws and some of the vulnerabilities creeping in was a really a rather unpleasant awakening to maybe the delusion that I've been living in since 2004, or at least since, you know, 2008. So Tokyo's strong point was that it was a vast improvement on what had oh, existed yeah. previously, even if they edited out the original intro and replaced it with Franz from uh, 2019. Uh -huh. that, that actually turned out in hindsight to be a nice thing with Fran passing away. So... I would add to it has to sound better than what circulates, if it circulates, that it needs to be unadulterated. Don't fuck with it. You know, <laughs> Fran's intro to the band, you can understand them using because maybe the one on the original didn't sound that great. Mm -hmm. It's been done on a live too. <clears throat> so yeah. doing it again certainly isn't outside the realm. But try and leave them unbutchered as well on another on an, another note I, I think 2022 there are a few anniversaries coming up and i'm hoping they just don't you know pass us by nothing happens yeah, ignored creatures? yeah creatures and of course revenge we haven't seen anything you know substantial being done there are great opportunities to do something with these anniversaries and um i know lani loves revenge i really love um the way the band sounded during the revenge era the revenge album is you know a bit of hit and miss but uh but uh, but 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 there's a lot of great recordings out there from from that era so i'm what do you guys think? Do, will they do anything on 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 creatures or or revenge? Some sort of you know anniversary thing? What do you think? Well, I I my my answer would be I don't think they will do anything with creatures. I somehow think that they'll probably do even less with revenge. But I would love for them to do something for creatures. Creatures is one of my favorite records that they've did. Oh yeah. Sonically, it's something that I really enjoy. And if there's anything anything in the vaults that they have of alternate mixes or of alternate takes i mean you know the only thing that i've ever heard from creatures that you know i was like wow i never heard this before is back in the day when i listened to uh the podcast and they had this like le they had a in the the devereaux vault thing that they oh no canadian uh wi-fi this little segment they had a, a, just a drum track of eric carr yeah, oh, the drum tracks. They had a drum track of just Eric uh, yeah. Carr playing. So there's got to be some stuff in the vault still, that era. I, I'd, I'd love to hear something from that. I mean, do they have more available for Revenge? Maybe, because maybe Eric, maybe uh, Bob Ezrin has, you know, some of that stuff in his possession as well. So maybe they have more access to unreleased stuff or things like that. But I'd love Creatures to be represented. Yeah, I mean, it, it would be nice um, for sure. creatures or or, uh, or revenge. Um, 
and maybe do you want to you know do you want a picture disc or do you want to maybe a box set from creatures so yeah uh, you know, if if they're going to continue to do box sets, Creatures is a, a good one to do. It's also, as Revenge would be a good one to do. Um, yep. Not counting a lot of other box sets that need to be done. Um, no, but 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 I think yeah, Creatures and Revenge are two albums that Paul are pretty proud of still to this day. He mentions yeah. Creatures, he mentions Revenge as these great albums that they've done. Uh, so and as we know he can be kind of the guy who who makes it happen or stops things you know so i feel mm -hmm. paul is very positive when it comes to these two albums so, so i'm i'm very perplexed that they haven't uh, you know done anything with these albums this year i really hope they do something and you know revenge you could just release five live albums or th you you pick one from from the club tour one from the you know stadium tour of america one from the uk tour and you have three you know awesome really great uh, live recordings and uh, i just hope they have a few of these recordings and that they will actually do something with it so box set yeah. i hope if they do do another box set that they listen to some of the constructive feedback received over destroyer and build on it from there because i think overall they uh had a very positive response to that product even with oh, yeah. the, the, the the minor paris. faux pas of paris um right. so there's something to build on you know what does it need to be you know was there ever a revenge picture disc i can't remember i know there was a lot of no there's a blue marble there's a marble so yeah they need yeah. to stay away Mark, from Mark all the one. color all the colored vinyl revenge shit has been done stay away from that um in terms of celebrating stay i would love back. to see a box set because i could easily i could boom put out you know a six cd set for revenge right now uh, and yeah. not paying any rights holders of course um <laughs> but there it, it could very easily be a substantial box in terms of studio stuff the rehearsals with eric carr jesus christ oh yeah yeah um the segue between the airs and i also say this uh, what would be really nicest for revenge if it does get a deluxe uh, treatment down the road and it doesn't have to be for the anniversary year because if we're doing 45th 47th 43rd and a half anniversaries of kiss product <laughs> uh, you could do it at any time but i would really like uh, do you want to touch me now to be finished mm. have gene sing it with uh for obvious reasons have bruce come in and do the lead over work uh guitar duel it with tommy because i think tommy's got some background vocals on the album as well so um you know get get that one completed and have, paul can you know put dial in some backing vocals you know and, and help mm -hmm. and have bob ezrin fucking produce it yeah. I know Paul Stanley wrote that one with Snake Sable yep. from Skid Row. Did you see that Skid Row got a new singer from Sweden now? Yeah, amazing. Yeah, huh? he's he's amazing. That guy, he might do some stuff for 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 Skid Row that make them. What was his name? Eric relevant. Cronwall. Yeah, exactly. It means green ball. So uh, oh, not okay. not a pretty exciting <laughs> not 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 a good artistic name, but he's an awesome singer. He br broke through. Um, with you know the what's it called that show you also have it in america where they come and sing um american idol. idol american idol mm. in sweden it's just called sweden. idol so so that was his breakthrough and he sang a lot of kiss tunes he's a oh. big kiss fan uh, and uh, actually yeah. during the um he won that competition and he got a you know a, a message from kiss uh, live and he oh, was dude. like star yeah he was starstruck I guess this is about 10, 12 years ago. Uh, I, I remember him doing Shout It Out Loud, for for example. Pretty good. And he, he had, if you guys want to check him out, Eric Grönvall, he has uh, a YouTube channel where he does a lot of covers. You know, everything from Iron Maiden to Skid Row to Kiss. He did Love Gun a few, a few uh, weeks or months ago. And... Uh, this is a great addition for Skid Row. I think he can do something for that band again. Yeah, uh, hopefully, because he can I, write lyrics as well. Let's sing. Yeah. <clears throat> right. Uh, yeah, they're releasing a new album in, uh, uh, I think, in not so distant future. And I, I'm kind of interested in hearing what, what 
he can do for the band. So uh, he's a great singer and a um, cool, cool personality and a great show showman. Which they have been lacking when with the replacements after S- Sebastian Bach. They haven't really. I don't know. It's a hard act to follow, of course. I know Julian has said a few things about Sebastian, haven't you? But but uh, but uh, I still think he was a, a great singer and a great frontman. I've, I've never questioned and, his vocal skills. No, no, that's true. Absolutely no, that's true. not. While I no. may not be a fan of Skid Row, it's musically. No. Um, and you know, I've listened to some of their 1990 boots from when they're on tour uh, while they opened mm. for Aerosmith. So, mm-hmm. you know... Give me Slave to the Grind. I prefer to the first album. Mm -hmm. And that's Mm -hmm. as far as I went with them. You know, I think I've got the B-Sides album as well. But, you know, there there are some bands I never really got into. And I never heard a song with, what was it, Johnny Solinger? Uh, I had died a few years ago. Yeah. Just didn't just didn't follow him. I haven't exactly followed uh, uh, Sebastian's stuff. No. I actually find him entertaining. All right, that's it. We were all over the place today, Danny. I'm glad you're able to join us, you know, and, and get your. your I'm just sorry working. I was late. I, I did not understand you have started summertime, so so so. That's so, okay. You know, the I, first I thought, 15 yeah. minutes is me waffling. <laughs> and the Usually, yeah. all right well that's it for this episode that's a bunch of just random stuff give us your thoughts on each part that we touched on no doubt you can pick and choose which parts we omitted which parts we got wrong um you get the the benefit of fact checking us with wikipedia god help us um so there we are oh yeah thank you giving that away yeah, so if you made it to the end of the show. Not by the way. But. Yeah, so obviously the <laughs> free copy of Virginia Beach off the soundboard green vinyl. Um, send me an Sorry. email, kissfaq at outlook.com, and um, say whatever you want. It's a random drawing. I'll put all the entries in and do a drawing. Let's see, next Wednesday, which you are, yeah, the 30th at noon Pacific time-ish. I'll do a drawing, and someone will win a free copy. Open to anyone in the world. I will ship it international if the winner is international, okay? So for now, thanks for listening. Give us your opinions, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now. See ya. Thank you for spending time listening to the KISS FAQ podcast today. All sales are final. There are no refunds. If you'd like, look us up on Facebook or come over to the KISS FAQ message board and discuss the topic we've broadcast today. Don't forget to rate us on iTunes, Spreaker, or wherever you've listened to the show. We hope you'll join us again.